This is Difficulty Adjust. It's a new mod in Laser that allows you to change the difficulty settings of a map. For the most part, it only really affects the gameplay of Standard, as that mode has the most customization when it comes to creating maps. But it does also affect other modes. It honestly provides a lot of flexibility when it comes to playing maps, and allows you to customize them to your liking. Seems like an overall great addition to Laser, right? Well, I obviously wouldn't be making this video if that were the case. I think the best way to go about this video is by explaining some of the advantages of having a mod like this, some of the disadvantages, and some solutions that could be put in place. Now before I begin, I do want to mention that I am aware of DT having a similar customizable feature, and a lot of the issues with DA spill into DT, but I will be making a separate video for Double Time as there are some different issues specific to Osmania that I want to talk about there. Anyway, the main benefit from DA I'd say would have to be the accessibility it grants to users. Let's say you're a lesser experienced player who finally wants to get into DT, but you just can't get used to AR 10.3. It hurts your eyes, it's too fast, and it's giving you headaches. Well now you can simply lower the approach rate to something more comfortable for you, and enjoy all the speed practice you want. If you want to practice accuracy but Hard Rock circle size is too much, or should I say too little for you, simply just crank up the overall difficulty and you won't have to worry about any of that. Over the years, we've seen more and more developers add features and modes that allows many different players to enjoy the full experience of their games. Not everybody has the time or ability to invest countless hours into mastering a specific set of skills just to enjoy the game. And honestly, nor should they. In Osu, for the most part, you can have two separate players of different skill sets and scores from different maps still be able to compete in the global leaderboard playing how they want. Granted, this does say something about the value of comparing players based on their rank, but either way, DA is an extension of that. If you simply have no interest in learning AR10, CS5, or OD7, you really don't have to. At the end of the day, games are for fun and should be played in a way that's comfortable for that individual, so as it's fair. Now, if you are a more experienced player looking to get more practice value from your maps and really hone in specific skill sets, DA is perfect for that. With this extended limits toggle, you're able to achieve values that were only previously possible with double time. Something like this would allow players to gradually get into AR11 and OD11 practice, as they could play a vast number of maps without being restricted by their DT capabilities. Adding circle size on top of that, and we could really see a wave of new high precision accuracy players that would be able to have the most efficient practice possible. Previously, if you wanted to adjust a map's difficulty setting, you would have to make a beatmap copy and edit the settings within the editor. This takes way too much time and you could risk corrupting the map if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And really, it just takes up too much unnecessary space from the abundance of practice difficulties. There's also tools like Osu Trainer and even McOsu, which is a whole practice client that you can customize maps in. But again, these are separate programs entirely, and it's a bit much to expect players to download different applications to obtain a simple feature. With the inclusion of the personal preset option, you can make different presets depending on what modifications you want to practice with and change them on the fly between playing maps. Lastly, I want to mention the creativity that can be achieved with DA and even other mods. Let's say there's a map of a song that you really want to play, but you want a bit more variation in the map. Adjusting the map's difficulty settings and even mirroring or randomizing the map can allow you to have a completely different experience from the original map. It creates more replay value in maps and can let each player experience them in their own preferred way. I honestly believe difficulty adjust is one of the biggest changes Osu Laser has introduced so far, as it offers many possibilities to the player and brings many advantages. But unfortunately, every advantage I've mentioned in this video so far is a direct disadvantage. Okay, okay, let me explain. With the added accessibility that DA grants, it also creates a space in which players might not feel the need to play out of their comfort zone. Why practice AR10 or OD10 when you can just crank down the setting anyway? Now obviously, players should have the agency to play exactly how they want, and not all players are like this. But it does feel bad when you see players complain about how they're not able to play a specific skill, yet they never even begin to attempt playing that specific skill. For the more experienced players, there's a risk of the slight opposite thing happening. Instead of avoiding skill sets that they're really bad at, these types of players might play an abundance of only what they're really good at. Imagine the most skill set focused player exactly min-maxing every aspect of the map to get the most PP out of everything they play, with slight increases to the OD, AR, and circle size, marginally changing the perceived difficulty of the map, but enough to change the awarded PP values, giving them a slight competitive edge in the rankings. This would of course create a slippery slope, leading to more and more users wanting an advantage over the competition, and could even change the course of the mapping meta as a whole. This is all hypothetical though, for a reason that I'll get into later in the video, but it's definitely a realistic concern that should be addressed. Going back to bringing up maps, something like difficulty adjust could undermine the intent of said mappers. A good example of what I mean would be something like slider velocity maps in Osu Mania. These maps clearly have an implied intent on how they should look and that's how they are played. The no SV mod throws all of that out the window completely and disregards any creative choices the mapper has made, or clever ways they wanted to represent the music in their map. DA is a lesser extreme of this. Now obviously, we already have mods such as DT, HR, DT, and even Flashlight to an extent that can change the experience of the map that might not completely line up with the visual representation that the mapper was going for. You see this a lot with HR, where a lot of the slider art and geometry kind of loses its meaning when the map is flipped. I will say these mods have been in the game for years, so we're all used to it at this point, and they each 
each change the map in distinct ways, so it's easy to glance at EZ or HR and get an idea of what the map will be like. With DA, the way it's customized can be in a number of ways, which might be completely different from the original map. Now obviously, something so subjective as mapper's intent probably shouldn't be considered too seriously as I'm making it out to be, but this does lead into another concern that causes problems. With so many players competing on one map with variable mod customization and settings, it begins to feel pointless comparing scores on a single map. If we have two players set these two scores, how do we really objectively say which score is better? We can argue that one player used a more difficult customization, so it's understandable for their errors, but the other player got a perfect score? As of now, the score multiplied for DA is set to 50%, so assuming they're planning on changing that, it's a real question we have to consider when it comes to ranking players against a single map, as each player can potentially have completely different experiences. The PP system lets us know to a better extent which score might be more skillful or indicative of a certain performance level, but at that point, are we really comparing the concrete score set on a given map or the perceived skill that would be required for setting a score? As you can see, it gets really nuanced. If we stick with the current mod multipliers that are used in Stable, we would seriously have to think about the best way of balancing the bonuses and reductions given per aspect of the maps modified, as well as how the performance itself should be weighed between scores on a map. Now, I've introduced a lot of issues and implications of difficulty adjust in this video, but I have a few possible solutions or considerations to present. If DA keeps its 50% score multiplier, that would solve the issue of map leaderboard rankings, as the top scores on maps would be closer to its original intent. This would still allow users to gain rank and to spam incremental changes how they please, and even lower certain difficulty aspects of the map if they really don't care about map leaderboard placements. This does, however, undermine the possibility of playing a map and setting the most perfect score with, say, the highest ODSs possible, or any vastly unique number one scores that could be possible. If DA were to become unranked completely, we wouldn't see any players min-maxing or any complications trying to rank map leaderboard scores. Players would have the ability to adjust the maps how they please, whether that be easier or for harder practice. But ultimately, they must play the map with a ranked mod combination in order to compete on the global leaderboard. I don't see this option becoming a reality because I remember Peppy saying specifically that he would like all mods in Laser to be ranked to an extent. If DA had a mod multiplier like the other ranked mods, there would have to be some serious consideration about how exactly to balance which difficulty aspects of the maps. This would allow for everyone to play exactly how they want, while also being able to compete on every leaderboard, but it does introduce the possibility of min-maxing and players setting a 0.1 mod change just to slightly beat out a number 1 score on a map. If all mods had a 1x multiplier and map leaderboards were based on PP, this would solve the issue of trying to compare different mod combination scores on the same map. A lot of players do already want this as it fixes the issue with lower accuracy scores being ranked higher on the map leaderboard, but it still retains that min-max problem as well as the implication that less perfect scores become ranked over better ones, simply because of the PP awarded. This is also a major issue that's starting to appear in Osu Mania, but again, I'll be covering that in a separate video along with Double Time. Anyway, that's all that I really wanted to share in this video. If you're someone who actively plays Osu Laser, please leave a comment with your thoughts on the current state of Laser, as well as what's going on with Score V2 there. Hopefully this video reaches a large audience so that these more subtle changes in laser can start to get more attention and discussion around them.